Not good, my love. I can't, I can't do this. We can't do this. How am I going to record? You need to move. Hello, Flosstube. Kate here of Colorblind Cross Stitch. Uh, it is currently May 27th, Saturday, because Saturday is Floss Tube Day, usually. Um, I am here with Neko, who I don't think is in the video right now. He, he needs attention, apparently. I have sat down, so he needs attention. I have a couple things to show you. I have been really quite busy today. Not today, this week. Really quite busy this week in terms of cross stitching. So I'm super excited. I have a finish, which is cool. And then I have a bunch of progress. Um, this week I was actually working on my dragon sampler. So I'll show you that. And one tiny stitch position came in the mail. So we'll take that on the end. Neko might even be in this video now because he's sitting up instead of lying down. He might lie down eventually. Yes, and be in the way because that's what you do. I know. That's what you're good at when I record videos. You always have to come sit in my lap. So yeah. Um, so as I mentioned last week, um, I did my video last week on Friday because I was going away for the weekend. Uh, Saturday, Sunday. Monday was a bank holiday last weekend because it was the Victoria Day weekend and I was debating what to bring with me and I wasn't sure because I was thinking I would bring my dragons but then I didn't want to bring my my Egyptian sampler because I wouldn't be able to see properly. Um, in the end, I did actually, I did bring all my dragons but then I also brought my butterflies and I showed you those, oh... I think I got them out again three or four weeks ago and showed them to you. So actually while I was while I was at the cottage I took a little video to sort of show you what it's like up there because it's really pretty and show you what I was working on. So I'm going to insert that here. Hello Flosstube. Um, this is Kate of Colorblind Cross Stitch and I thought I'd take a little video and show you where I am this weekend because it is absolutely beautiful up here. Um, this is like I said, my person's family has a cottage. It's like on a lake and this is, this is actually, okay, it's a bit of a danger zone because the bottom floor is under renovations, but this is the view. I get out my door and swing around. That's our bedroom and it's mostly finished now. And I thought I would show you because it's just such a lovely view. Like I wake up in the morning and I can just like stare out at the lake and it's super pretty. Um, it's a very rainy day today though, which probably makes, I can close the door. Some people unhappy, but I think it's great because I like a, a nice gray day. And it's the perfect day to stitch. So I thought I'd show you what I ended up bringing today to the cottage was not my dragons. Well, I have my dragons too, but I got my butterflies back out because I realized that having finished the back stitching, um, I didn't need to see. Like, I have a copy on my computer which I was using for the back stitching because there's black and brown and then metallic back stitching, and I couldn't see the different colors on my paper pattern. But now I have the border and then they have bullion knots on their bodies and that's all I have left to do and I can do that I know what what the pattern says for those without needing to see it on my computer so I've been working on on this border I hope this focus is good um, and I've actually been trying um, some couching because it just the pattern just says to do it in like straight stitch it doesn't tell you and it just has a long line in the pattern. It doesn't sort of tell you what, like how to go about getting such a long line in, in straight stitch. That one's not too bad, but there's a big long line here from like there all the way to there. 
And so I was like, oh, well, I'm not sure how I'm going to get such a big long stitch to sort of stay, stay nice. So I'm trying couching for the first time. So my big needle is the border, which says to do it in six threads of metallic. And then this small needle is my thread for couching. So I've kind of been going along and putting the border in and couching as I go. And I'm about half done, done the top and then down this side and then I'll go this side and then up and so I'm hoping that will work and then I need to do bullion knots for their bodies um, which will be interesting because you you need a milliner's needle for that so that the eye and the shaft of the needle are both the same size um, but I looked through all my needles and I don't have any of those so I'm gonna try it with a normal needle and that may or may not work I may have to give up on the bullion, bullion knots until I can get a proper needle, but I figure I'll try. And so I might actually be able to get this finished this weekend, which would be super exciting. So yeah, that's, that's me and my weekend. I think I might sit and put some more of this border in and I will talk to everybody later. Bye. So yeah, as you saw, I did a lot of work on my butterflies because Sunday was a rainy day, so there was no going outside. Uh, so um, what happened was, um, like last Friday, I had sort of gotten to the end of my thread in the Egyptian sample and I didn't really want to start doing more with it because I wouldn't be able to take it with me on Saturday and so I didn't want to sort of like get, like get really into it. and think about how much I'm enjoying it and then not be able to take it with me. So I pulled out my butterflies and sort of Friday night, Saturday morning, I finished all the back stitching and the back stitching I needed my computer. I'd done like a, a actually I think I took photos of it because I didn't have a scanner handy at the time um, of my pattern because while everything is like the, the cross stitches are all symbols, there we go, there goes an echo. The back stitches are colored lines um, and they're like black, brown, and I don't know, gray or blue or something. Um, so they're, they're, I can actually see the difference in the colors, but I had printed the pattern when I enlarged that pattern, I had printed it in black and white, not in grayscale. So I had to use my computer to see the back stitching so I could see sort of which lines were which colors to get the right colors. Um, and I actually finished up the back stitching Saturday morning last Saturday and so I was like wait a minute I don't need my computer for like the last thing I had to do was the border as you saw which is straight stitch and then a bunch of bullion knots for the butterflies bodies um and those are I mean technically they're like the border is like a thick black line and the bullion knots are thick brown lines but at that point I'm like okay I know what the border is I know what the bullion knots are I don't need my computer I could probably do this pattern and finish it because I'm so close and that is what I did so stop with me talking and show you the cross stitch there it is finished and I just realized I really hope that you can see because I don't because it's navy blue and I don't know if light might be shining through it. So yeah, so I finished up, last time I showed you I sort of finished all the black back stitching, so sort of like Friday night and Saturday I did, there are a bunch of butterflies that have brown stitches, like this one I think, and now that one might be black. That one maybe. I don't know, I can't tell the difference between the black and brown on the, um, on the actual fabric. It's a really dark brown. Um, and then a couple of them have metallic back stitching, which is actually really hard to see on most of them. Like, that one is metallic and you, oh no, that one isn't. Is it? I don't remember. Yes, no, there is metallic in there. There's metallic in that one, there's metallic in this one that's like sideways. Yeah, and then there's metallic in this one in the corner. And like, you can see the metallic in the this one in the corner, but not really the other ones. At least, I can't. Um, so then the last thing was the border, which um, I did. 
I actually tried out couching, so I'm kind of proud of myself for that um, to sort of help keep it straight because in the pattern it just it draws a big black line and it's like somehow get that to be straight stitch I'm like what what does that even mean how am I supposed to do something like like from there to there as like one big stitch like what that'll never go like that that'll just like I won't stay straight it'll look really ugly but then I remembered like someone one or two people I think either on stitch mania or um Floss two people I'd been watching had mentioned couching and like explained sort of like how to do it and I'm like oh wait I could do this with couching and then my stitches would stay straight and and they would be lovely and so I did and I think I mean especially for my first time I think it came out really good and the metallic actually wasn't the metallic wasn't too much of a pain to work with um, especially with one strand. With one strand doing the like the back stitching was actually pretty easy. Um, when I got to the border, like the border is like six strands and then one strand for the I did one strand for the couching. Um, that was a little trickier to keep the six strands from like tangling. But but I did it. And then I had to do my bullion knots. Those were fun. Um, the thing is that because with bullion knots you wrap the thread a whole bunch of times around the needle and then you pull the needle through this like tightly wrapped thread. So the best way to do them is with um, a Milner's needle. I feel like they have a, another name that I don't remember. Um, apparently they were originally used for making hats. I don't quite know how, but somehow they were used in hat making. Um, and the thing with a Milner's needle is if you look at like a standard tapestry needle or sewing needle or basically most most every other needle embroidery needle sewing needle tapestry needle the eye of the needle is slightly wider than the shaft so your shaft is kind of like one one length and then it bulges a bit at the eye you know to help you get the thread in I suppose um, a Milner's needle is unique in that the eye is not thicker than the, than the shaft. It's all one, sort of one thickness, which means that when you're pulling the needle through these like, you know, seven, eight winds of, of thread, it just goes in, it goes through nice and nice and easy because it's all one length, not one length, one thickness, it's all the same. Um, I looked through all of my needles of random needles that I had. None of them, none of them were Milner's needles. And then the other thing is, and so I took a bunch of needles with me because I'm like, I don't know which needles are gonna work the best. Um, in the end, I ended up using embroidery needles for my bullion knots because they were the only needles I had that had eyes big enough to fit six strands of, of embroidery floss. Um, at least that I'd brought with me. I do have some bigger tapestry needles uh, somewhere um, that I've used for like darning socks so they're like made to like hold wool um, or not socks I don't darn my socks that's just too much effort I've darned slippers before I darn my slippers sometimes actually I don't have any spare wool right now so my slippers just have holes in them um, but yes yeah, so I used one of my embroidery needles um, and sat down, I think it must have taken me a couple hours just to do the, like, seven or eight or ten. I don't know how, much, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, okay, ten bullion knots. To do the ten bullion knots because I did sort of very carefully wiggle my needle through all the knots of thread without them, you know, coming undone. Um, my fingers hurt after that from, like, pulling on this needle forever but I got them done so I'm like they don't look terrible I mean I feel like if I had a milliner's needle they probably would be neater but they don't look terrible and considering that was my first time doing bullion nuts and I didn't have the right needle I'm pretty damn proud of myself so those are my butterflies they are finished I need to um, wash iron and frame them you can see they're kind of wrinkly 
um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm not going to do the washing and ironing until I've got the frame to frame them. Um, so that that way, like, I'll, I'll press them and then put them in their frame so they're nice and flat. And stay flat. Um, so yeah, that's, I guess I should mention, it was a Dimensions kit. I think it was like Dimensions Petite, possibly Dimensions Petite Gold. I don't remember exactly. Um, Exotic Butterflies. It is on navy blue 18 count Ida. There is a cat hair. There's probably more than one cat hair on this fabric because everything picks up cat hairs. Um, so yeah. 18 count navy blue fabric is kind of evil. Um, this is why the other thing I'm doing on navy blue fabric when my fabric gets here from Stitch It Central is going to be on 14 count navy fabric because I was not doing 18 count navy fabric again if I can avoid it. I mean I probably will end up doing something like this again because look at how pretty they are. They are so pretty, and if I find something again that is really pretty and it counts for like dark fabric, I will probably give in. I will probably hate myself while I'm doing the project, but I will probably do it anyway because I love making beautiful things. It's like my one over one skin. I hate myself while I'm stitching it, but I do it anyway because in the end I have really pretty, pretty skin. So. That's like the story of my cross-stitching life is this is a terrible idea and I'm going to do it anyway even though I hate myself because the end product is going to look amazing. And it does. I'm really pleased with my butterflies. I'm probably actually going to give them to one of my nieces once I friend them. Probably my sister is eldest. Her birthday is in August. Although my sister's youngest niece, her birthday was in May. So I'm not sure, because they actually, they go to the Butterfly Conservatory quite a bit. So, then they could have a picture of the kinds of butterflies they see at the Butterfly Conservatory. As made by me. You know, they're Auntie Kate. So, that is, that was my finish. So exciting. I'm very pleased. This took me over a year. I started it... Uh, in February 2016, I remember because the pattern, the kit arrived, like, the day before I went to Cuba for Reading Week in February. Um, which was an amazing trip. Oh my goodness, I had so much fun. Uh, and Cuba is a beautiful, beautiful place. Beautiful place, super nice people amazing time. This came like the day before I left, which was amazing, and then I took it with me. So that's what I kind of started it. I think I put, I wound like the thread on bobbins before I left, and then like started it like on the plane to Cuba, or back from Cuba. But yeah, so that was, that's, I started it just before, or on our, on our way to Cuba in February, and then I finished it May 2 for weekend 2017. So I guess it actually would have been like May 21st or May 22nd, but it's finished. It's done. It looks amazing. I'm so pleased. I'm also pleased because like the back stitching was just kind of hanging over my head. Like I did all the cross stitching. I did pretty monogamous with this project. I think I started like worked on it from like February to like August or something and got all of the all of the cross stitching done. And then started the back stitching and it was just a real pain because I had to like use a picture that was on my phone, but my phone is really small. Um or sit down at my computer, which I just never found time for. Um for the longest time. Cuz I had to like, you know, set out to make time to sit at my computer which rather than just kind of cross stitching while doing something else so like there was just like you know six eight 
10 months or something where I just didn't work on this. And it just kind of sat there being mostly finished, but not actually finished. So now it is completely finished. I'm really happy about that. So happy that I've been talking about this, rambling about this for like ages and ages and ages. Finished. That's that. Um, and then I pulled out, actually, I took, I took with me also both my, my dragon sampler and then Joan, Joan Elliott's celestial dragon or crescent dragon or whatever it's called. It's the dragon like sitting on the crescent moon. Um, and I pulled out my dragon sampler and started working on that one because I wanted something, um, after having done like my Egyptian sampler, um, which is really complicated and the butterflies which involved like learning new stitches because to the fully announced at the end and stuff I wanted something like and like the navy 18 count Ida which was hard to see I wanted something like nice and easy um and also because I did like I tend to when when I'm with my person's family I tend to cross stitch like while while watching movies or or, or or like while doing other things so I wanted something that was sort of nice and easy so I could like watch you know watch or like listen to movies and do the cross stitching at the same time. So I pulled out my dragon sampler and I got so much work done this week. Um, so much work. Now I'm just gonna I'll just let me just show you. Um, there's more of the alphabet up top. So the alphabet's been done for a while that I did first. Um, let's just fold that in half. So when you saw this last, I was in the middle of doing this corner, this corner thing. I like just finished his wing and he had like his tail, but he didn't have any, either of his legs or his head and like half of these motifs weren't done. So what I did, what I did is first I started on like finishing off the purple of his head and I really just... I'll show you, show you nice and close so you can kind of see what's up. Lovely, lovely. Let's fold this. Let's fold this so I can kind of hold it up. Like that? Yeah. We'll do this like teacher school thing. So yeah, so I started on doing his like to get his head and legs done. Um, what ended up happening is um, over the weekend I didn't do too much on this because it was just like one evening of stitching while like watching a movie I put some more stitches in sort of like here I think I got to here specifically because I actually there's a like I'm one stitch off here but it doesn't matter it won't like run into the next motif so it doesn't matter so I kind of like fudged it and was like yeah we're fine uh, so that was that what that's like what I did on that weekend which wasn't actually that much but then um, this week I had a lot of reading to do for school. Um, as I've mentioned, I'm doing my, I'm in the process of writing my dissertation, um, which mostly is good, but I've gotten stuck. Causative verbs are hard, y'all. I don't even know why I just said y'all, because that's not even part of my, like, my English. But causative verbs are hard, and I can't, I've, trying to fit them into my analysis because I thought I had them and then I don't and to try and explain how they work in Ojibwe which has been my problem for two or three months um, probably going to have to stipulate something and just say that this is how it works and then move on because I don't know what else I'm gonna do even though I don't want to like throw in any more stipulations than I have to because that's yeah um, anyway, I'm sure no one else even knows what I'm rambling about. <laughs> Suffice to say, I have been doing a lot of reading this week because I've been trying to solve the problem I'm currently having with my analysis. And when I read, I read on my computer um, because that is, I, I can't, I, mean, I, I can read print, I can't read print for very long without getting a headache. Uh, and I need to read a lot of stuff to do my to do my degree, um, and a lot of fairly dry, um, really interesting if you like linguistics, but you know fairly dense sort of like scientific articles, 
uh, you know, theoretical syntax and, and fun things like that. So what I do is I like to do something while I'm reading that is, like, that keeps my hands busy and doesn't engage too much of my mind so that I can listen to what I'm reading and, like, absorb what I'm reading, stop to take notes when I need to, but keep myself active enough that I don't just fall asleep. Um, because even if the stuff I'm reading is actually really interesting, my computer voice is... Okay, we're not talking like Stephen Hawking voice here because uh, text-to-speech has improved, you know, quite a bit in the last 20 years. Um, but it's still, it's still like, I mean, it has some intonation, but it's still fairly monotonous because it's still a machine reading, you know, reading stuff. Actually, the... The funny thing about the, um, the Stephen Hawking voice um, is, like, if I want to reference, like, the really old text-to-speech, like, first-generation text-to-speech programs, if I say Stephen Hawking, everyone knows what that sounds like. The funny thing is that, for me, my, associ my association with that voice is not Stephen Hawking, but back in high school... Um, I went to a school for the blind, so all of our all of our high school computers had text to speech software on it. Some of them actually still had. Um, it was. I mean, I was. This was like fifteen years ago. No, I graduated like. Oh my god! Did I? Has it been fifteen years? Oh wow! I have graduated fifteen years ago. Oh my god! I feel old. Um, not really, but like I always feel like high school is like, oh yeah, that was just a couple of years ago. Like, no, no, that was 15 years ago. I graduated high school 15 years ago. That's a long time. But especially at the beginning of high school when I was like in grade nine, so like 20 years ago, or no, not quite 20, 18 years ago, um, you know, we would have been on like what Windows 98, something like that. No, no, Windows 98, I think. So, like, Windows was only, was fairly young, 18 years ago. Um, and a bunch of the computers still had, like, MS-DOS, which is all text, text-based, text before, like, mouses were a thing. And the old, like, MS-DOS screen reader was that Stephen Hawking voice. Um, and what, what we used to do is, um, during exam week... You'd feel like during exam week, we had exams in December and exams in June. And when you weren't writing your exams, you were basically free to do whatever. Um, it was a residential school, so we lived at school and we had to be sort of somewhere in the school building. So, like the library or the student center, or there was one of the computer labs that, if it wasn't being used for exams, that you know we could sit down and play in. And just, you know, dick around on the computers and do whatever. You know, as long as we weren't, like, looking up porn on the internet. Actually, that computer lab might not have even been connected to the internet. Because um, this was, like, before wireless internet was a thing. And everything was, like, modems. Like, the 56K modem that made, like, the really, like, high-pitched screeching sound when it connected. Um, but these, this, this computer lab had the MS-DOS had MS-DOS and had the MS-DOS like text-to-speech Stephen Hawking voice and had a bunch of like text adventures. Um, so like really old, like old, old, old school computer games and it'd be like, you are in a room, there is an exit to the northwest and south of you, what would you like to do? And you had to like type in basically two word answers. So you could be like, go west. There's one that was like, you are on an island and you're just trying to just explore this desert island and get off the island in the end. And so you can do things like throw a spear, or, you know, go north, or enter a cave. But as long as they had to be two-word answers, and they generally had to be, like, fairly specific, but if they, I guess the instructions was like, it's a two-word answer, so we can program in all the two-word answers, except, you know, occasionally you'd get, like, try to do something, and it'd be like, I don't understand what you're doing. Um, and that would, like, you'd get a message like, you know, I do not understand please try again, or, you know, something like that. But it was all text adventures, and we'd get, you know, turn on the text-to-speech and, and play, like, MS-DOS text adventures. 
Which is, it's, it's like, it's all text. Like, there's no graphics at all. It's kind of the point. Um, which, I mean, for a completely blind person, is great, because it's all completely accessible, as long as you, like, turn the voice on. And so this is what I associate the Stephen Hawking voice with. It's not Stephen Hawking, uh, even though, you know, it's the voice he's been using basically forever. Um, and apparently the reason why he won't change is because people now associate that with, like, that's his voice. Um, but no, I associate it with playing, like, text adventures in high school when I was, like, you know, had, like, a free period during, or, like, had, had a free period or, like, was during exam week, especially because exam week had lots of free time, um, when you weren't writing your exams. And, yeah, there's, like, there's one that was, like, a desert island, um, I think there was one where you could, like, run for president, um, and then there was, actually, there was another one which was actually, like, I think it was actually a Star Wars one, and you were, like, flying an X-Wing. Um, that one was really hard, though, so I think I only tried it a couple times, because, like, Darth Vader kept blowing me up. Uh, and I never succeeded at getting anywhere. But yeah, and it was all, we would, you know, turn on the text-to-speech, and just get the text-to-speech to read, like, all the text. And narrate it, instead of trying to read in, like, you know, regular print on computer screen, which I can't always see. Um, and that's, that's what I associate the really old text-to-speech voice with, is text adventures in high school. Um, this is a complete tangent that has nothing to do with stitching, and only started because I was talking about how I stitch while I read, and I had lots of reading to do this week, because I'm trying to figure out what to do with Ojibwe causative verbs. Um, so... I had a book to scan, so I scanned the book on Tuesday because I got back on Monday. Tuesday I didn't do much reading and stitching because I was scanning the book into my computer so that I could read it. Um, but Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all three days, basically what I did was read and stitch on this because this is, this is a perfect piece for when I need to read because it's... It's all full crosses, it's only two colors, it's 14 count Ida, it's nice and simple in terms of, like, cross-stitch. So, as I was saying, all tangents aside, uh, I started, I finished, so, like, I think Wednesday I, like, finished off the horse's head. Well, he's, he's a weird, like, horse dragon. Uh, I put him in here because this is supposed to be dragons, and I put him in here because I'm like, I'm not sure if you're a horse or a dragon or what, because you kind of have, like, he's kind of got, like, the Pegasus thing going on. You guys can flip him over so you can kind of see him better. Because he's got, like, a horse's head and hooves and, like, Pegasus wings, but he's also got, like, this sort of, like, underbelly, and then his tail just kind of, like, flounces off into these, like, swooshes. So, he's kind of like a weird, like, Pegasus horse dragon. Honestly, I, I, he's, he's super fun. I love him. He, he is super fun. Um, that is a lot of purple. Dark purple. That's a lot of dark purple. It used up my second dark purple skein doing his, like, finishing off the stomach and head and legs. Um, so, yeah, I finished the head one day. Wednesday, I think. And then the next day I finished off his legs. And then I started putting in, um, this motif wasn't quite finished. The dark purple on the top wasn't quite finished. I put in, finished that off, extended this border some. I've actually decided that that is about the halfway point on the pattern where this border ends. Um, I'm going to there's like three, four, four little purple stitches that go in there. And then I'm going to change that. Because originally I had it set so that it did that whole, this border like all the way across. And then there's this border up here that also goes all the way across. Um, but all of the other border patterns that are kind of like, like this kind of like made to be sort of border patterns, don't go all the way across. Like now that I'm done, this motif, like on this side, there's like three or four 
like borders that go here but they only go from like from the end of this this motif to the end of that so they go like halfway across or actually less than halfway because this is the halfway point and so I was like you know what I'm going to change that I want that to be two separate borders so I've actually um sketched out you know quickly doodled myself out another border that's the same sort of thickness so I can just kind of insert it for the other half of the pattern um so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to have to come up with for the top do the same thing and come up with something but I haven't I haven't done the top at all yet so because I'm doing do, finishing off the bottom first now that I've done the alphabet and then I'll go up and do the top so yeah so I finished off his head one day his hooves another day and I think I put the top in that that border and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then sort of like I did part of this motif. I think that was sort of Thursday. And then I finished off this motif. I actually, I really like this motif. I think this is one of the favorite, one, my, one of my favorites that I've done so far. It's just like really fun. And I find it really interesting. I like that one too. But I like this one. Um, yeah, and so that was that was yesterday. I finished off that motif. I put a couple more things in the border. I came up with another border to like continue this one with. Um, and then I started in. There's another dragon there. So he has his wing mostly done. His head one one leg. He's actually a wyvern, so he has another leg that comes down here, and then his tail curls around in there. So there's another dragon there, and then that will be, I, I looked, and I'm basically a quarter done, a quarter done this pattern, because this, sort of this where I've shopped this border is the halfway point, so I'm not quite, because there's his tail that goes in there, so I'm not quite done this quarter, um, I may actually even be a third done, because I've done a little more here, and I've done the whole alphabet before like I did the whole alphabet first so I'm probably between a quarter and a third done so and I did so much and it's just it's just really nice to really nice to stitch on because I love I mean I love the purples that I chose purples like one of my favorite colors I love purple uh, and it's just it's a nice break from the more complicated things I was working on with um, Teresa Wentzler's Egyptian sampler and with uh, even the butterflies like doing the boolean knots and and the 18 count so this is just it's nice it's a nice change it's a nice break um I've done my reading I finished my reading last night that I really need to do I still don't know if I, still don't know if I have an answer to my problem in like my analysis but I've done all the reading I think I'm going to need to do for now. So I'm going to probably put this away. Oh, actually, something else I figured out. Um, I don't know if you remember, like last time I was doing this, I showed you I was doing the wing and it only just fit. Well, I discovered what happened is if you look, you have like, like the wing only just fits by like two his head like it starts like that one is like two away from the edge but then this one is like three and then you keep going and this one is like five or four um, what it actually is is this cloth is not cut straight so if you hold the pattern straight like that is you know that's that's the end like on that end, that's how much fabric I'll have above it, which is, which is the inch I was supposed to have, not the like two stitches, the like quarter inch or whatever that is, that I end up having on this end. So the fabric was not cut straight on the bottom. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it was cut straight on the top. I 
no. No, no, I'm looking at it and it definitely isn't cut straight on the top, so I think I'm going to have the same problem with the top in that on this side, you know, I'll have my full inch and it'll be what it's supposed to be, but on this side, I'm going to be right at the end. So, that is what happened with that, is my fabric, um, might technically be a 12 by 18 piece, but it wasn't cut straight on the narrow, narrow side. I'm pretty sure the, like, interestingly, the sides are pretty well cut. Like, there might be a variation of, like, one. But that, like that, the 18 inch length. <laughs> like, you'd think that would be the hard length. That one's cut right. It's the top and bottom, which are the like only 12 inches to cut instead of 18 inches to cut. Oh, I'm I'm fraying like mad. I sewed my edges to keep myself from fraying, but I don't think it worked because I sewed them very, very, very close to the edge because I only gave myself like one inch borders. So my edges are fraying like mad. Um. So yeah. Lessons learned. One inch borders? Terrible idea. Don't do that again. Um, starting in the middle? Really good idea. Always do that. Because otherwise I would have run out of space on the bottom. Which everything fits because I started in the middle. So that's my progress on my dragon sampler. Um, so much progress. I'm very pleased with that. I got so much stitching time in while I was reading. Um, and did my reading and got some ideas and so I'm hoping I can come up with, with a thesis answer so I can finish this chapter, which has been taking me way longer than it should have. But, story of my life, you guys. Story of my life. I'm probably, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put those away again, unless I need to do more reading that needs something sort of simple, simple to stitch, for which this is, this is a great, great part of that. I still, I love that guy. He's so much fun. So yeah, there's that guy, and then on the opposite corner, This corner, there's another. Uh, I think the one, the one in this corner looks more dragony, um, but it's the same, the same kind of diagonal thing that fits into like a whole corner. Um, it's great, love it. That's my dragon sampler. So that is. my finish and my progress and some rambles because that's how we roll. And finally, here's the one minor thing that came in the mail. Needles! I mentioned a couple weeks ago I found on Facebook it was one of the sellers in uh, Cindy Sorley's Facebook group, uh, Cross Stitch Express Buy and Sell, I believe. I'll put a link below. Um, and there was someone who had bohin needles uh, in bulk, and they were selling basically 25 needles for $5 US um, and like $2 shipping to Canada. So, I, which is an amazing amazing because I think I've seen like I've seen someone on eBay selling bulk needles and they were like but they were like twice that they were like ten dollars or more for 25 needles um, so I got 25 size 24 needles and 25 size 26 needles so 50 needles 
for $12 US, including shipping, which I think worked out to $17 Canadian, and that is amazing. I now have needles to last me at least a couple years. I feel like I should I should take at least a couple years to break or bend or wear through all of these needles. And and they're so smooth. They're like they're so nice compared to like the DMC. I mean the DMC needles are like the needles that come in kits because those are the only needles I've had so far. Um I've actually I've only used the 24s because I was working on my dragon sampler. Um, so I took a couple of the 24s out for that because um, that is stitched three over one. So three over one needs a 24 needle. Um, and I put so, but with the Egyptian sampler and my dragon, my other dragons, my celestial dragon, I put in some 26s. So I'll, I'll try those. And if they're like the 24s, I'm just gonna be in like needle heaven. I am. I am very pleased with my new needles. They're really nice. They just kind of slick through the fabric, um, which is great. Occasionally, doing my ends has been annoying because the needles are so slick that I'm like, I can't grip my needle. And the eyes are. The eyes are kind of big on these ones. I think I think maybe all of my needles previously have been 26s cuz these these 24s are pretty big. But it makes them really easy to thread. So yeah, and on the whole I am loving them, I have to say. But $17 for 15 needles. That is amazing. It's such a good deal. So yeah. I got like when I got them in the mail, I was slightly confused because originally I was like, I thought, yeah, I got a package and I'm like, oh maybe it's my magnets. So they're like, oh they sound metal. I'm like, wait a minute, if they're magnets, they're gonna be sticking together and not making that much sound. And then I opened them and I'm like, ah, oh, needles! Cause I have needles coming, so I have needles now. So now I am, I am really good. I have like scissors for everything and needles for everything and hoops for everything. It's great. So now I have to decide whether I want to do my Egyptian sampler or my celestial dragon. I might do my dragon because I haven't worked on that one in like a month because I've done, been doing my, my Egyptian sampler. So I might pull my other dragon out and do some work on that one. I don't know. I'll see what I feel like. I do feel good though because now I have three active whips. Three active whips. There's one. My cats, I'll get back to them, but they're currently a UFO. Um, so, but so three, I have them down to three active whips, which makes me happy. Um, and I finished three, three big projects this year. There's also my frog, technically he's four, um, but he took me like three days. So I finished three projects um, in, in this year. This is like my third big finish for 2017. So now I'm down to three active whips. I mean, it's going to become four very soon once my, um, once my things from Stitch It Central arrive. Four or possibly five, because I might start one of my black work journey patterns too. Um, I might not though because the one of the patterns I'm, I'm stitching is going to be a uh, is going to be a gift. So I want to start that one and do that one first, make sure I get it done. So it's going to be at least four active whips once my things get here. But for now, I'm down to three active whips, which is like that's a nice a nice number that I can give them all some love in, in sort of a reasonable amount of time and get but have a variety of things to work on because they're each, they each definitely have some difference. Like my dragon sampler is very simple. It's two colors. It's all full crosses. Um, my Egyptian sampler is probably the most, yeah, I'd say my dragon sampler is the simplest. Then there's like Joan Elliott's dragon, um, which um, will eventually have some beads and metallic thread. 
Uh, it does have some fractional stitches, which I will have to, I'll have to pull out my embroidery needle to do those with, I think, because um, I'm working on Ida for that one, because that was what came in the kit. I dyed it though, so it's not white Ida, so it's more interesting, but, uh, so it's, it's on Ida, so I'm going to want um, my embroidery needle to do the fractional stitches, but there aren't too many, I think there's like, there's some in the dragon's face, uh, and maybe around the edge of the rest of the dragon, but what I'm working on, because I always start in the middle, the middle is just full crosses in a bunch of different colors, so it's kind of like middle in complexity. And then there's my Egyptian sampler, which is the most complex piece I have on the go right now, because it has, there's fractional stitches everywhere, I'm doing the one over one skin, there's blended threads, um, there will be metallics and beads, um, there's specialty stitches, there is all the backstitching because Teresa Wensler loves her backstitching, oh my god. Um, this is why I'm sort of trying to do the backstitching for that one as I go. Um, my Celestial Dragon, I'll probably leave the backstitching till the end. Uh, I, there's, I think there's, there's probably quite a bit of backstitching in that one too, because I feel like the wings are like the outlines of basically the dragon is backstitched. I have to look at the chart again. It's been a while since I've looked at the chart. But, so it's kind of middling, and then my Egyptian sampler is like the most complex. Um, so it's nice that I can sort of like change it up and have, you know, work on a really complex thing and then be like, okay, I need a break and go over to something simpler sort of thing, so. Um, and then I'll see how complicated my my gift pattern is going to be. It's a dimensions kit. So if it's like the, if it's like the butterflies I did, it will be like the Joan Elliott sort of middling, middling complexity. Um, I don't think it has any like specialty stitches by the looks of the picture, but maybe it will. I mean, I didn't realize the butterflies had bullion knots until I started reading the instructions and I'm like, oh, that's a thing I've never done before. So we'll see. We'll see when it gets here, but it's not here yet. So probably next week or the week after, I will probably have a video that involves lots of awesome things that come in the mail because um, I think Stitch and Center must have had to order some of the things because it's been a week and my package still hasn't shipped. But once it ships, it should be here really quickly because it's going express post and it's coming from within the province. So it should be really fast. Uh, yeah, so that will that will show up eventually, which I will get to show you. Eventually, all of my my magnets, <laughs> my magnets will come from China at some point, and my bobbins. Um, that's just I mean that's what that's what happens when you order on eBay from China is that it shipping is free, but shipping takes like months, and it will show up. You know, they will show up eventually. Like the last time I ordered a bunch of things from eBay. I think I ordered them in October and my last my last thing showed up in like the end of January or like the beginning of February or something so that's like November, December, January. So they like took three months. So we've got end of March, end of May. We're only at two months. So sometime in the next month my things will show up from China. And then I may or may not be acquiring a fabric stash tomorrow. Um, and some bling. I'm definitely acquiring some bling. I found someone on Kijiji who was selling a, a bunch of, um, a bunch of fabric and she had like some like mill hill beads and like spools of Krynik. Um, and I'm definitely going to get the, the mill hill beads and spools of Krynik from her, um, because she had them at like a really good price. So I'm meeting her tomorrow. I'm definitely going to get those. I'll show you them when I get them because I'll find out what colors I have. What color of shiny thread I get to play with? Um, because I am mostly excited about like the metallics, um, the the Krynik to have reasons to just throw Krynik into things because shiny. Who doesn't love more shiny? Um, and like I said, it's a really good price. And then she has a bunch of fabric which I'm gonna look at and see. Um, you know, see what shape it's in, see what the cuts are. 
because if they're all like fat eights then they're all going to be too small for most things so I probably won't buy much of it but if they're like fat quarters or like fat halves um, then probably I will because again it's I mean this person clearly just kind of wants to get rid of the stuff and like recoup some of some of the money that she or someone else spent on it Who, whosoever's fabric stash it is um, yeah I am so over my cross stitching budget for this month because I ordered from went from uh, Stitch It Central and now I'm buying from someone on Kijiji but I'm just kind of gonna not you know, not spend anything in June probably not spend anything in July or August either but it's a really good deal that I just I can't pass up because I, I saw it and I'm like oh my god that is like you know if it if it's if it's decent sizes for the fabric it's that's so yeah I'm gonna have some bling to show you next week uh, again I mean unless for some reason we don't meet tomorrow and then the whole thing falls through which it's a person on Kijiji this is entirely possible um, I don't actually have the things yet and she might have like you know we've agreed to mean so but she might have sold them to someone else in the interim that's that's always possible so you know probably probably I will have some bling next week probably I will have some fabric next week possibly I will have my order from one two three not one two three from Stitched Central next week which also includes bling and fabric possibly I will have my orders from eBay which are making their way around the world but they've been making their way around the world for the last two months I've been saying that for like the last like eight videos or something like Oh, I'm waiting for my things to show up from eBay. They still haven't yet, except my scissors. My scissors did show up. So I'm still waiting for magnets and bobbins, but you know, we'll see. No, wait. I'm going to... Um... While, I, while I'm talking to you, I'm gonna, like, get on a tiny soapbox for, for a minute. Um... Because there's something that's been kind of bugging me for a while, is that... And I, like, I am one person. I cannot do anything to change this. But, like, I love, like, some of, like, the, like, the Nora Corberts and, like, Mirabilia ladies and stuff. They're really pretty. I really wish there wasn't, like, a gypsy queen and a gypsy mermaid because they kind of make me uncomfortable. Not the patterns themselves. The ladies themselves are very pretty. Um... Gypsy, unfortunately, is one of those words where, you know, in North America, it just denotes, like, a kind of fashion or whatever. In Europe, and to, like, the actual Romani people to which it refers, um, it's a racial slur. So, I see, like, the, you know, the, the Mirabilia, like, gypsy queen, and there's part of me that's like, like, okay, nice pattern, Whatever. I mean, I don't particularly want to stitch it because I don't particularly feel like stitching it. Um, I haven't found a mirror that, like, really, like, grabs me in a way that makes me go, oh my god, I need to stitch this. Um, but that's just... They're very pretty. But none of them have yet. I haven't yet gone, like, the oh my god, I need this with one of the mirrors. Um, but yeah, just, like, the names of a couple of them make me feel awkward because in Europe like gypsy is still like the Romani people who are the people who are called like that's what gypsy refers to um like there are places that you know like will refuse to serve them um or you know and they still get basically treated like oh yeah you're all like thieves and cheats you know you they you know you get like dirty gypsy as an insult and it, and it's, it's kind of like there's party that looks like you know the pattern and it's like oh it's called gypsy queen like it's like calling something like you know a squaw princess for a native american or like a n i'm not even sure i can say it a nigger lady for like a black person and you realize that would be terrible and no one would do that because you know people are one hopes, you know, people like Nora Carver, it seems like a really nice lady, and she wouldn't, you know, go around, like, naming things racial slurs for just to be a dick. 
Like, I don't think that's in her personality or in, like, the other designers' personalities. But, like, there's part of me that looks at, like, the, you know, things like the Gypsy Queen or the Gypsy Mermaid and goes, why does this have to have this name? This name is really awkward. I mean... And so there's part of me that's like, I feel like I need to mention this because I don't think people are aware of it. I mean, I know I wasn't aware of it until I was an adult, until like a couple of years ago, you know, and I was reading basically someone who is Romani was talking about, you know, talking about like, hey, this word is a racial slur. Can people stop using it? Um, because I said it in North America, it's just like, it's describes a fashion or, you know, a kind of like, you know, someone who's like a free spirit, wandering soul kind of deal. Um, and then has that sort of like particular sort of like fashion with like, I don't know, big skirts and lots of bangles or I'm not sure exactly what's in sort of like gypsy fashion. Um, you know, and it was a thing that was mentioned in like, old stories, like fairy tales, um, or like the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Cosimodo was originally, well no, Esmeralda was originally stolen by gypsies and then grew up to be a gypsy. Um, or whatever the French word for gypsy is because, um, oh gosh, I've, I, I'm, I'm blanking on the guy's name. Gosh, I can't remember. The guy who wrote The Hunchback of Notre Dame originally, and who wrote, like, Les Mis. And I'm, I, I know the guy's name, but I am completely blanking on it. I, what's, okay, well, I, I fail at, like, classics now, but, yeah. Um, but so, like, that's, like, that's where I'd seen the word before. It's like, okay, it's in random old books, or, like, it describes a fashion or whatever. It's just a word, um... But yeah, no, it turns out, like I was saying, in places in Europe, there are, like, stores that refuse to serve Romani people because they are, they are gypsies. Um, and so it would be really nice if, you know, if, like, Nora Kerbert, Nora Kerbert, I'm sorry, I've been... if Nora Corbett or, like, other designers ever happen to watch my Floss 2 videos... It'd be really great if you stopped calling things gypsies. I feel like that would just make me feel less awkward. Um, and, you know, to people who are actually Romani, I feel like maybe they would appreciate it. Um, I'm not, I guess, to be, you know, in the interest of full disclosure, like, this is not a personal, a personal thing. I am not a Romani. I am not descended from Romani. Um, I don't even know if I'm saying they're people's name right because I've only ever seen it written down um but I mean and again I like I've come across discussions on the internet about this and you can take that as you will because you know sometimes the, the internet you can get into like this kind of like echo chamber sort of thing going on and I realize that but you know now that I know that you know, in some places of the world, it is a racial slur. It just, it just kind of makes me uncomfortable that we have patterns and people are just, like, throwing around the word. Like, yeah, whatever. When, you know, for the people to whom that word applies, you know, the actual Romani people who get called gypsy as an insult, it, it would be, like, you know, like I said, like, like naming something, you know, a a nigger lady, which you just wouldn't do. <laughs> I mean, who hasn't been saying the word? I can't, like, asterisk out the letter in. <laughs> I need a verbal asterisk. So I can be saying, like, most of the word, but not the whole word. Um, you know, like, you wouldn't do that. And so there's part of me that goes, like, I feel really uncomfortable and, like, vicariously. So, yeah, there, there's my... My soapbox. I'll get off my soapbox now because, again, I'm... I'm one person. I haven't even stitched these patterns. I probably never will because they aren't, like I said, they just don't grab me 
in a way that makes me go, I want to stitch this. Um, and it's nothing against Nora Corbett, nothing against the Mirabilias. I mean, the Mirabilias are the ones I know about. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, the other designers that do ladies, like Lavender and Lace or, like, Joan Elliott, you know, if they have gypsy ladies, too. It, it's not an uncommon theme, because, I mean, they're, you know, they're known for, like, some interesting fashions that would be fun to, like, put on ladies and stitch. That's cool, but just the name is awkward, and I wish... I wish they didn't have those names, but at least it would be nice to make sure that people are aware about this kind of issue, and maybe in future, for other people who are designing who might happen to watch this video, um, you know, maybe you can come up with a different name if you're doing something with that kind of fashion style. But yeah, it would just be nice if, you know, people would be aware of this, and maybe in future we could have less, less accidental racial slurs in our patterns. And that's, that's my soapbox. If you listened to that entire, like, mini rant, thank you. Um, it's, <laughs> now that I've written it, I'm like, I'm, I might edit that out. I don't know, because I feel like there's so many more important things to be concerned about in the world. One or two cross-stitch patterns with an awkward name aren't it. Um, but, you know, by the same token, like, maybe it's a good thing for people to be aware of. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Now I'm just talking. I'm probably done. I've been done for a while. Um, this video is probably going to be kind of long because I'm just kind of talking. I want to, like, think of something fun to end with. Oh! Here's something fun to end with. Um, my eldest niece, my eldest niece is seven. Um, and... Actually, yeah, she just, she just turned seven. And so, a couple weeks ago, maybe I mentioned this already, I don't know if I did, but a couple weeks ago, not a couple weeks ago, no, it was Easter. Easter weekend, I was visiting, my Christopher and I visited his sister and her family, so, and that's my eldest niece. She's my, my boyfriend's sister's daughter. Um, and so I was stitching, actually, while we watched Moana, because currently she loves Moana, which I don't blame her. Moana is an awesome movie, and if you haven't seen it, you should go watch it, because it is amazing. Um, and super great. Uh, but, so I was stitching on my Joni Elliott Celestial Dragon. I don't have it here to show you, because I haven't worked on it in a month. Um, it's, it's over behind, behind the camera on my, on my dresser. Um. And I was, and I was stitching it and she was like, you know, she was like, oh, what is it going to be? And I'm like, what's well, going to be a dragon? And then she was like, um, who's it going to be for? And I was like, um, me? And then she was like, cause I love dragons. And I'm like, okay. So I thought that was kind of funny cause I'm like, kid, I can totally see that you're angling for like for like a thing, but um, you're probably gonna be 10 before it's finished for one thing. And for another thing, I totally chose this pattern for me. I mean, maybe by the time I get to the end, I'll be like, okay, I've stitched it. I don't want it anymore. I will give it to you and you will love it. And that's great. But I just thought it was really funny that she was like, had this totally like, I love dragons. Like hint, hint, hint. I'm like, oh my goodness. Um, I don't think she realizes how long cross-stitch takes, because she's, like I said, she just turned seven. Um, but it was kind of cute, regardless. <laughs> well, the awkward, but also kind of cute. And, you know, in the end, I'm sure I'm going to stitch her something eventually. Like, I've been keeping my eye open. Um, keeping my eyes open, because I'd love to stitch something for all of my nieces and nephew, eventually. Um... Penny's probably going to get the butterflies. 
Uh, I've been looking out for her sister Matilda. Uh, loves owls. I've been looking out for a good owl to do uh, for Matilda. Which I should probably find soon because she might stop loving owls. Although she's been like, she's three now. She just turned, she turned three in May and she's loved owls for like the last like year and a half. I think like the owl was like one of her first words. And she was like, what's your favorite, favorite animal, Matilda? Owl! Um, and so now she has, she has like, uh, I think she's a stuffed animal. It's like, it's the great horned owl. And then she has, um, my mom found her as like a little figurine. No, wait, she got a little figurine from my, from my older brother, or from my younger brother, I think that was an owl. And then my mom found her as like a needle felted or something. I'm not sure. Um, but it's like really a, a, an older sort of like figurine sort of thing but it's like stuffed animal like kind of like it has fur or um because mom found two i have a fox on my dresser which again is behind you so i can't show it to you um and matilda has this owl and so that one's that one's old owl and it's just it's just it's just kind of funny she she loves owls so i'd love to do her find her a nice owl to do but i haven't found one that i kind of really like enough to to stitch and then so um for my boyfriend's sister's children man kinship terms are so awkward when you're not actually married just, just throwing that out there english kinship terms terms have not evolved to um compensate for you don't get married in your 20s anymore so i kind of end up being like my boyfriend's sister's children I mean, effectively, she's my sister-in-law, but technically not, because we're not married. But, I mean, we've been, you know, going out for over nine years, so at this point, we might as well be. We're not going to not be, I mean, we we'll get married eventually. It just hasn't happened yet, because I have a degree to finish first, and, you know, life. Life happens, and marriage hasn't happened yet. But, so, my boyfriend and sister's children, she has, she has a, um daughter and son and so crystal was the is the eldest of like all of the all of the nibblings um and she was the one who was talking about like i like dragons um so i'm thinking keeping an eye out for things for her that are either like um disney themed because she likes she likes all things all things disney um sorry um, that cold that I had for my birthday, the very, very tag end is still, is still with me. So I'm still a little bit, um, <clears throat> need to like clear my throat a little more, more often than, than usual. But, um, so yeah, for her, like something Disney, um, especially like Disney princesses, um, I did see like the Brooks Brooks princess dresses, but I'm not stitching something that complicated. Sorry, because um, they have like beads and and ribbons and braid and I don't know what else. They're super complicated. So I mean, if I was gonna do one, if I was gonna do something like that, I'd only do like one of them. But um, you know, or like. Um, Again, a dragon, because she does like dragons, but probably something a little more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Flowery? Maybe that's what I'm like, a little more flowery, or like a fairy-like dragon. Um, there was one pattern that I've seen, but haven't quite figured out where to buy from yet, that I'm kind of thinking might be cool. It's like a snap, it's called the Snapdragon, I think, or Snapdragon something. And it's like, it's a little dragon, he's like flying around like flowers, but he's got like fairy wings kind of deal, like they're like more butterfly wings than like bat wings kind of going on. And so I thought like that'd be like a cute dragon to do for her. Um, you know, or like something, something Disney, like Mickey Mouse and the gang, or like the Dins Disney princesses, especially if there was like one where they were like all together. Um, 
Mostly because, like, I'd want to include Mulan. Mulan is my favorite princess, and I don't think she gets enough love. I love Mulan. She's my favorite. So. Um, but yeah, I am not, I don't know what I'm going to do for her yet. I keep, I keep my eye out and I haven't decided on something. Um, her brother is just turned, no, he hasn't turned three yet. Because he's a little bit younger than Matilda. He turns three in September. Um, he's tiny, Andrew. <laughs> Even though he's not tiny. Tiny Andrew is not tiny. Tiny Andrew has been an overlarge baby since he, like, was born. <laughs> um, but I call him Tiny Andrew because my stepbrother is also an Andrew, and so in my head, you know, stepbrother Andrew came first, so he is Andrew, and then the baby, well, he's no longer the toddler Andrew, is now Tiny Andrew because compared to stepbrother Andrew, who is an adult, Tiny Andrew is tiny, but He's a big, he was a big baby. I was a big baby and like a big, I mean, I think maybe he might have like slowed down and is, is maybe starting to be closer to his side. But like, he'd be like at six months and be in like, like baby clothes for like an 18 month year old. Like this is like, he was just a big kid. <laughs> was Tiny Andrew. So he's Big Tiny Andrew. But Big Tiny Andrew, um... So far, seems to really love, like, cars and trains and things. So, um, he, like, he loves Thomas the Tank Engine. Uh, which is great, because, like, Thomas the Tank Engine was totally, like, part of my childhood, too. Um, actually, before it was really a thing in North America, uh, because, because my family, uh, my parents are both from Britain, and I remember as a kid having, having these, like, Thomas the Tank Engine books that were... They were an interesting size, because they were, like, yay tall, but, like, yay wide, so they were, like, twice as wide as they were tall. Um, and they must, like, from the 80s. I think, I think maybe, like, cause I must, I, my, my grandparents, I think, must have got them for us. Or we picked them up, you know, when we were in England, when we were really young. Or at least when I was really young. I don't remember, like, I never remember buying them, but we always had, like, at least half a dozen of these for, like, Thomas the Tank Engine books. Um... But, like, before Thomas the Tank Engine was really a thing in North America. Um, like, before there was, like, Thomas the Tank Engine on TV. I don't know if maybe there was, like, Thomas the Tank Engine on TV in Britain. Um, and then they, like, ported it over to America. But, so yeah, so, like, Thomas the Tank Engine, like, was totally part of my childhood, too. Um, also, at some point, um... And my boyfriend's sister has got a hold of, like, someone gave her, like, the original, like, Paddington Bear books. Um, I can't remember if Paddington Bear was in Andrew's room or Crystal's room. Um, but, like, Paddington Bear is also my childhood. Um, like, I remember reading, like, the original, like, Paddington books. So we had a couple of them. Um, so at some point, I'm going to borrow them from, from them, from Ange, and, like, read them again because that's also, like, my childhood. Um, but suffice to say, so like for patterns for Tiny Andrew, who is not tiny, um, I think like I'd love to find him either, either something that's like actually Thomas the Tank Engine, um, or I do have, um, one of the pattern books I happened to pick up when I was, um, person on Kijiji was selling all of her floss and stuff, and so I picked up, um, picked a bunch of stuff for a good price and that was one of the things was a book of like cars and trains and so like things on wheels um and one of the things it has it has a train in it so there's like the engine the caboose and then like three or four cars and so I was thinking to do something something with that for Tiny Andrew and make like a train would be kind of cool um and then Semele my brother's my brother's daughter who is my youngest niece she is only like eight months old or something, so um, she will probably be the last person to get a cross stitch pattern because she doesn't really have. I mean, I don't want to say she doesn't have a personality yet because that's not that's not true, um, but I don't know her yet, and she doesn't really have interests as such yet because she's still basically doing the. I'm a baby. I'm still figuring out like 
you know, how my hands and feet work and like the fact that like I can make noise and people will respond to that and like that kind of thing. So she's still in that very much like early development um, sort of thing. You know, her interests are like, ooh, this thing is bright and colorful. Ooh, this thing makes crinkly noises. You know, <laughs> as opposed to, you know, even my like Tilda and Tiny Andrew, who are both like, you know, two and three, and who still at least have like, you know, interests in stuff, like trains or like, you know, owls. Tilda loves owls. Um, Penny loved dinosaurs for the longest time. But there aren't, you know, there aren't really that many good dinosaur patterns. It's really unfortunate because I'd love to, I'd love to stitch dinosaurs. I would just have fun stitching dinosaurs for like me because dinosaurs are awesome. But like I've only found one or two patterns and they're all like just kind of like really cutesy cartoon dinosaurs. And I don't know, I think I'd want something a little more like, you know, artist rendering of what dinosaurs might have looked like. Which I think you could totally do and make cool, especially with like feathered raptors. You could give them all sorts of like exotic bird plumage and it'd be great. Someone needs to someone needs to make me cross stitch feathered dinosaurs so I can stitch them. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, so I haven't found any dinosaur patterns that I really like. It's like space patterns. There aren't that many like space themed patterns. Um, which is I did find the most amazing um heaven and earth design pattern though this week, which I do want to stitch eventually. Um I will insert a picture because it is great um, and it's like two of my favorite things because it's like planets and dragons all together. Um, so like I've, I've always looked at like the heaven and earth design charts and gone, no way, way too big, way too complicated. I mean I know they're only full crosses so in that sense they're not, they're not complicated in the sense that you don't have to like worry about specialty stitches or like blended for threads or anything but I'm just like nope. Nope, I am not, I'm never stitching, you know, like a 500 pixel wide by like 500 pixel deep, you know, picture in cross stitch that would take me for fucking ever, um, you know, and I would just, I would never, I would never finish and it would cost me an arm and a leg and like thread and fabric and nope, 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 nobody nope, but, um, someone mentioned that Heaven and Earth Designs was having a sale, I don't know if it's still on, um, so I went and looked around their site. I found this and I'm like, oh my god, I need this thing in my life. But I mean, I need this thing in my life eventually. Because it's awesome and I want to do it. And because I think it would be really fun to do like the planets and the, like the dragons that sort of go with the planets. Um, like I think that's a, like, that's a cool, I think that's a neat, a neat theme. Like I've seen... You know, there are ideas of like seasonal dragons or like elemental dragons or things. I'm like, that's cool. I would probably stitch those too. Or like birthstone dragons. Like there's the um, Ingleside Imaginarium birthstone dragon cell, which I've kind of been tempted by a couple times. Um, and now I have a bunch of other cool things to stitch. So I think in the end, I'm, I'm not going to end up doing it. Um, even though I'm having lots of fun seeing like everyone else's pictures. But... This would be like planets and dragons, and so it's definitely like on my wish list of, you know, if when I feel like doing a heaven and earth design piece, that's like, that's what it's going to be because planet dragons, so awesome. And on that note, now that we have gone on a million tangents and you've just been like staring at my face forever. Um, I'm not even showing you anything. I haven't shown you anything for like, oh god, I don't even know how long it's been. I haven't been keeping track of time and the camera's facing the other way, so I don't know how long this video is, but a long time. If you've sat through that entire thing, I congratulate you. Um, even if you sat through that entire thing in pieces, which is how I tend to watch longer videos, because uh, I don't always have, you know, like an hour to sit down and watch things, but, you know, I come back. And then watch in bits because YouTube is great it remembers where you are and will like start from where you were before super handy but yeah if you've if you've gone and watched through my entire video awesome um, thank you 
please feel free, free to like, comment, uh, subscribe if you want to see more of me. Uh, check out my my other videos. I can't believe this is like video number 10. I've been doing this for over two months, guys. I, I thought maybe I would get to like three videos and then be like, oh, I have nothing to talk about. <laughs> Turns out I can just ramble in front of a camera forever. Uh, thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for watching. Um, thanks for your, your comments and your, your thumbs upses. If you, if you don't like what I have to say, then, you know, you can totally thumbs down. I, I wouldn't blame you. Um, I can't imagine I'm, I'm really all that interesting all the time. Like, I hope I manage to be interesting most of the time, because people watch me, so yay! Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I've done more than, like, three videos and how there are more than, like, three people watching them. But I think it's awesome! I, I mean, I love the fact that I can come here and, like, ramble at a camera and you find it interesting. And, you know, then I get to go and, like, watch other people ramble at a camera and find it interesting. Which is actually, now that I think about it, maybe it shouldn't be so surprising that people actually find me interesting to listen to. Because I, like, I go and watch other philosophy videos and find them interesting to listen to. Um... Even when they're even when they're stitching things that I myself wouldn't personally be interested in stitching, um, you know, because people have different tastes, and I appreciate that people have different tastes. But even like, like you know, people produce some beautiful projects, and I'm like, that is amazing. I would probably never stitch that, but you did, and you made it amazing. I love that. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.